Hello, this is Paul Huppert with OnlineLessonVideos.com. In this, Volume 4 of the Violin Beginner Series, we'll be covering several subjects. Those are posture or hold for the violin, as well as how to hold the violin bow. Also, we'll be discussing the use of tapes, both on the violin fingerboard, as well as the bow as a learning aid. I hope you enjoy the lesson. Now, let's get into the violin hold. I do have a basic three-point um, canvas that I like to cover holding the violin so that you develop a little more confidence in doing so. And as I mentioned, um, with or without a shoulder rest, and generally we all have chin rests, you should be able to hold the violin fairly securely without the aid of your left hand or arm. So let me go through those three points. The first one, and it plays directly into the chin rest, is I don't generally apply my the bottom of my chin directly to a chin rest. That's one mistake I see very often with beginners. Whether the chin rest is placed in the middle or to the side, they, they sort of twist their head and try to apply their chin directly on, assuming that's why it's called a chin rest. If you think of the chin rest as being more of a jaw rest. It's not an exact thing. You can have part of your chin slightly over the tailpiece. You can have it more over the, the top of the instrument, the bout here, or less. It really depends on the individual. But I do like to see, as soon as I see a student just doing a little bit of this, to me, that indicates a, a higher level of comfort and familiarity with the instrument. And also, it will help you if you have music in front of you to observe the music or whatever else might be going on. Perhaps you're playing with another musician. So you don't want to just be kind of locked into your chin directly on top of the chin rest. That's the first thing. So the first step is jaw rest and collarbone. So we have the collarbone here, the shoulder here. If we put the violin directly on the shoulder, it would be way too high and way too awkward for the bow arm technique. So we bring the violin down slightly without going too far. It's kind of a mid-range here. So I like to think in terms of jaw rest and collarbone. That's step number one. Now, to ensure that your left arm is properly positioned, there's a one basic test. And what I mean by properly positioned is if we held the violin as I am now between the jaw and the collarbone, and I did what comes naturally with my left arm or shoulder, my arm would be like this. And what we need in plain position is to swing the arm forward, and you notice how the hand goes along with it, it's really kind of one unit. And the reason we do that is so that the fingers can be within dropping range of the fingerboard as opposed to always reaching from this angle. Not to mention that if your arm is excessively back in this manner, then shifting, vibrato, any, any kind of really facile playing is pretty much out of the question. So the first step, and it's really a pretty easy one, you just, you have to get accustomed to that swinging motion here. Maybe the rotary cuff is involved, the shoulder. I have been told by some beginners that they're very unaccustomed to this movement. I've been doing it for a long time, so it seems more natural to me. But just this much, especially with an elderly student, can really cause significant stress. So when you're first doing this, start easy. Just do a few minutes at a time, maybe a five-minute practice session. But by adhering to these basic principles, you'll accomplish a lot in just a few minutes. And what we're really trying to do here is set a pattern or a habit. So let's go over the first couple steps again. We have jaw and collarbone. Then we glance down through the right C bout to see if we can, and you can just see a touch. Like right now I'm seeing about a half inch of my arm here through there. You just want a glimpse of it. It doesn't have to be the elbow and forearm and everything else. That would be extreme and you'll probably feel it in, in your shoulder if you're doing too much. So just ease it over this way. Maybe position a mirror so you have a little bit better visual of what you're doing. And then the last step, once you have accomplished this, is to drop your left hand, like so. 
We don't always play in a manner where we absolutely don't need the left hand. As a matter of fact, I advocate striking a balance between this part of the violin and this part of the violin so that you almost get a back and forth relationship between the two. For instance, those of you that shift, we all know that when we shift, especially at large shifts, there's a moment there where we pretty much let go of the instrument. That's where this exercise really comes in handy. But also for beginners, your left hand needs to accept some of the responsibility. And also you'll tend to hold the violin less like this with your left hand if you know that you're supposed to be supporting it at least partially from the left hand area. So the responsibilities lie here, here, as well as your left hand. So let's go through that. I call it a three point check. And we'll also have one for the bow. First step, first point, jaw and collarbone. Then look downward slightly and check for your arm and maybe play with that angle a little bit. See what seems excessive. And when you're doing that, observe the positioning of your left fingers. You'll find that you're much more able to reach over to the G string, for instance, if you think of it as coming from your elbow. So it's really just a mechanical leverage kind of thing. And then once you've checked to see that your arm is visible through this, the C bout, then we basically just set ourselves and drop the left hand. And you can just drop the left hand for four or five seconds or so. Now let's go into the next step, which is the violin bow hold.